All right, guys, here's part two of the video. Um, today, hopefully, we're going to fix the uh, DSG that we started taking apart. Um, so, essentially, what I think we narrowed down the problem to was the, um, the tracks on the piston. So, we got right here, you can see the, um, the tracks of the piston actually rides in the gearbox shell. It's going to be really hard to pick up in camera, but they've actually widened. So, I'll try to point it out, but you can kind of see how this one is a rectangle in shape. And this one has a slant at the top of it right here where the uh, plier is. So that slant obviously should not be there. It's due to wear. Um, and the slant, it's really hard to see in the camera, but the slant does go all the way down to the uh, corner where the track actually starts. I'll try to make that a little easier to view. And it's causing the piston to have way too much play in the actual gearbox shell as well as tilt itself and the combination of both of those I think was causing the piston to jump off of the um, the sector teeth and the gun would not function so we are fixing that we are installing a new piston we will have to shave down some teeth in this piston to correct AOE and then it should be good to go um, however the other fix we have to do today is when I opened the gun up, I noticed um, one of the bushings in particular had actually cracked. So I got some new bushings for that, and we will be replacing those. And hopefully, I will not have to reshim too, too much, and we will be good to go. But that's about it. Um, fix the piston, replace the bushing, reshim some of the gears with the new bushing, and then I think we're all set. So this first part of the video is going to be... Um, I don't know how much I'm actually going to record because I'm literally just going to take a Dremel to this piston and I'll show you guys. So in order to correct the AOE, I have to make the teeth, the number of teeth match that are on these pistons. So this one has the full rack, the pickup tooth, and then all the way down the other 15. And this one, as you can see, it's missing a lot. I don't need to shave those off and I probably actually won't on the second one. However, what I do need to do is correct the AOE up front. So you can see the very first few teeth, they are shaved off on this one and they are not on this one. So you see there's a pickup, the next one shaved off. The one after that, it's hard to see, but it's shaved halfway down and the rest go forward. So I need to make those same height changes on this piston. So this will, this will fit into the setup and have correct angle of engagement with our gun. So that's what I'm going to do first. I'm going to use two Dremel bits for that. A, a standard grinding bit and then a cutting wheel because it gets in the area easier. I don't have anything smaller to just sit there and profile it down. Um, so I'm going to do that now. And then I'm going to record this part, but I'm probably going to edit away most of it because it's just probably gonna be like 15 minutes of me trying to get some material um, off this piston. Well, the other thing, guys, I'll probably do most of this off camera. I'm gonna do the the Dremel in a different area, and then I'll come back and I show progress. But again, I probably will just delete this whole part. All right, we're back. Uh, finished Dremeling. So I gotta take the piston head out of the old one into the new one. But as you can see, teeth are grinded down and we are good to go. Um, I wanna do a fit check just to make sure that they're ground down to the right height. So we need to remove the piston head from the old piston. And then we'll be reinstalling it on the one we just ground down. And then there's a pesky little piece in here that does not want to come out. There we go. Alright, so old piston, put this to the side. It's broken, we don't need it anymore. New piston. We are going to put the head on. Oh, it's not going to fit. More dremeling, awesome. Alright, so it looks like the cutout for the piston head is too thin on the piston. So we're gonna have to take the Dremel back out, actually find a new bit and start to grind away at this area. Let's see if I have the bit already. I don't think I do, but this one fit? Mm, not really. 
This is the best part of airsoft though. You find out that you buy all the pieces, they go together, and then they don't actually fit together, and you have to change them all and modify them all. Let's see if this works. Yeah, okay. So I'm not using the right bit, but it's just plastic, so almost anything can go through. It's not going to hurt the grinding stone, so it's going to make the hole a little wider. Reverse that. There we go. Hole's wide enough. I'm going to shave off the excess that's now around the side, and then there's the hole. And then we will be uh, good to use this. Now this should fit. Ah, beautiful. All right. So now this head fits in place. Got to screw it down. So let's take our screwdriver and our spacer. Put those together. Lock that on. Then we're gonna slide this down. Make sure the screw pokes through. And put this bad boy on. There we go. So she's tight. She's not moving anywhere. Um, we're all set there. New piston is assembled. I might actually want to replace the O-ring on this. I don't know if I did already. I probably didn't, so I might as well just go ahead and do it. Um, so I took the O-ring off, just in case it's old. I forget if I replaced this last video, to be completely honest. So I'm just going to do it anyway, since I have plenty of them down here somewhere. Yeah, I still have a giant bag of them. Um, there we go. So this is the old one. We'll put that over here. Okay. Now, we will um, start getting closer to the actual work. So let me take the Dremel out of the way. Put that over to the side. So, new piston. Let's Now we get to check and make sure it actually fits. So if to install the cylinder assembly into the gearbox. We have to install the sector gear into the gearbox. And uh, after that, we are going to have to, now we install the piston. And all this is doing is I'm checking to see if this piston will line up at proper AOE and it clears the teeth. It doesn't have to be exact. It should be should be pretty straightforward though. Like normally you'll be able to tell if there's enough clearance or not. Looks like there's there's plenty here. I might actually want to do a little bit more shaving to be on the safe side. But to be completely honest, nah this is fine. Alright, so I know it's hard to see, but all I did there was I took the... You have to put the cylinder assembly in, because in this case, this is an old build. I use sorbethane for AOE, so it's attached to the cylinder head. So I need the cylinder assembly in for the proper spacing of the piston. Once the piston is sitting at its proper spacing, a.k.a. where it's going to be when the sector comes around to pick it up, you put the sector in and you test. You just turn the sector and like pretend they're going to mate and make sure it fits. What you're doing is you're not necessarily checking AOE here, which you can do that, but what you're really checking is that the sector gear does not catch on any of the teeth, like these teeth over here, before the pickup tooth. It has to have completely free travel all the way back to the pickup tooth. So this is the first one, this one right here, that it actually engages and catches on. Um, so that's all set. Now we're moving on to the next part. So the next part was the shimming. And the reason why they shimming is because, I think I showed you last video, one of the bushings was crap. It was broken. 
Um, the very top part is chipped and I want to reuse that because it might break more. So the safe route is to get new bushings and completely redo it. Um, granted, I this bushing, I forget which one it came off of. I know it was not the, uh, the bevel gear, which is good because the bevel gear is the most annoying one to shim. Um, because that, the bevel gear shims to the motor and the motor is static in your gun. It can move laterally through the motor and tie adjustment, but it cannot move in the uh, Z direction in the gearbox, which is the direction all the gears move with shims to correct the height between them. So um, that being, this is the most important one to shim because you cannot adjust the motor to this bevel. There's no give in the motor. You have to adjust the bevel to the motor. And then once that one's done, all you have to do is match the spur's height to the bevel's height and then the sector to the spur. The sector and the spur are insanely, insanely easy to shim. They are not hard at all. Um, there's very little risk in shimming them as long as you do the bevel to pinion method because you literally, all you have to do is keep adding shims until the sector's teeth, right, not the sector, the spur's teeth or the step gear's teeth on the bottom mesh with the bevel teeth on the bottom. So what you're doing is you're making sure, so if this is it's inverted, it's upside down right now so I can show you, but this, the, once you shim the bevel, the bevel will be here. The spur will start maybe here on the gearbox shell. And you keep adding more and more shims until it meshes with the bevel perfectly. And once you add too much, it'll be tight and it won't move and it'll get stuck because it'll hit on the body of the bevel gear. It'll go too high to see that. So all you do is add until it's perfect and then you stop. You're adding to the bottom, that is, in order to raise it, or the top in this picture. And then you flip it over and you say, is, this, is the spur gear still loose? Yeah, it's still a little loose. So you add more to the top to tighten it up in its spot. Um, and then the, the sector is the exact same process, but you're referencing it to the spur's top teeth now instead of the bevel's teeth. Because you're only correcting height, it's very easy. Because the bevel gear, that's the one where you're not adjusting the motor's height to, so you can't set them equal to each other. You have to set it equal to the motor. If you get that one wrong, it throws the rest of the gears off, and that's why it's the most important. Um, so that being said, we are going to now take this out and we are going to go in here and start checking the shimming height. So what I have to do is install the bevel and the spur and make sure that they are still shimmed together because where the bushings are getting swapped around, you just want to make sure everything's okay. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this and this, and we are going to install all of these. So those match up A-OK, -okay. that's where we want them. Um, now what we need to do is take the sector gear and just make sure it matches with the spur still. Looks like we're good to go there. So we're going to put this bushing back on. So now what we want to do is we want to install the new bushing. So I'm going to install, I'm going to keep track of which of the old bushings go on which um, gear but I want to install as many of the new ones as possible simply because these bushings are like three years old if one of them cracked the others could be on the way I'd rather not leave risks in the gearbox so it's just easier if I have the bushings here to install them so what I'm gonna do is I'm, I, I know this gearbox was shimmed properly already so I can add the bushing on and reference it and I can say if this is too tight now I know it's the bushing and that's what I can use as my reference. This one's done. Yeah, all right. That was good too. So we're gonna pop these suckers on. We're going to pop on, oh wait, I already had a bush in there, hold on. Oh, I put one in, I put one in, okay. He goes here. I'm gonna pop this sucker on, and now we are going to see how tight it actually is on the gears. Mm, something's getting in the way. Hold on. 
this up. Something does not want to clamp down, so I'm always going to take the trigger out for now because I don't want to fiddle with it too much. Um, but let's see. Nope. All right, I think we're all set. I think it was just this being a pain in the ass. Alright, there we go. So, this is all clamped down. Now we need to find the screws and install those. So let's, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So we're going to install um, the main screws now that are going to hold the gears in place. So all the ones surrounding the uh, gearbox. Make sure you really want to tighten these down. You want to install the screws as if you're putting the gearbox back together because if you keep them too loose, it's not doing you any favors. Um, all it's going to do is you're going to test your shim job in a scenario that's not actually indicative of when it's going to be used. It doesn't fully represent the end result, in which case it, it opens you up to possible problems. So, for example, the gears are spinning, but they're definitely tighter than they really should be. So what that tells me is that the new bushings I'm using are thicker than the previous ones. So what I want to do is I want to find out which gear is really, really stuck. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to take my needle nose pliers, but it's really just like a push pin at this point, and I'm going to test the bottom of the gear axles for play. So what I'm doing on this side, I'm going to put the pliers up against the bushing and poke upwards because it's going to flip it over and I'm going to be able to see if there's any movement in it. So it's actually there's a lot of play in the in the bevel so I might throw something else on there. The um, the spur does not have any play at all so that one's pretty tight and then the the sector gear over here also does, really does not have any play. So it looks like the two gears that I put the new bushing on are tight and this one's loose. So we're going to do a swap where I'm going to throw the new bushing on the bevel gear and then I'm going to throw the um, the bevel bushing over on the spur and see if that frees some, or maybe the sector, see if that frees some stuff up. This is why you test it. You don't just want to throw things in a gearbox and call it good because I mean the, the gears were spinning. It would have functioned, but it, it, it was it wasn't um at the level that I wanted it at. Alright, so crack this open. I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna swap these two. Make sure there's no no shims on that that I'm carrying over. That guy's gonna go there. Alright, and then we are going to adjust the shims on the spur. So we're gonna take one of these shims off and see where we are at. And now we do the same thing again. So yeah, this isn't, I realize it's not the most entertaining thing to watch, guys, but um, this is what you gotta do to make sure that this stuff is perfect. And you really do need this stuff to be perfect in these high stress setups like DSGs. I know this DSG is gonna shoot a little slower because the, the motor I'm using is actually, I think it's a Lonex A2 Titan, which came out in 2014. So this is an old motor, these are older parts. This setup is not running at peak efficiency, I just need it to work. Um, we want, friends want to go airsoft in the next week or so. My brother's gun is not working. I want to make sure he can play with us. This is more just to get him out and going. 
Um, here we go. So now we, we test. We go to the bevel gear is pretty tight. So we're going to look into taking a shim off of that. Um, the spur gear it has some play, which is good. Very, very, very small amount of play. So if we went from being rock solid on the spur, we took off a the smallest increment of shim that we had and now it's got a tiny bit of play. So that's where we want to keep it. And now we look at the sector and this guy this guy looks like he's way pushed up. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep an eye on that sector here. Oh yeah, this guy's rock solid. So this gearbox isn't even moving anymore. So some with the sector is not in the right spot. So we're gonna have to keep looking at that. So this guy was not moving at all. So we want to change him around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take him out. We're gonna take actually we're gonna take all these out. So remember we wanted to take one off of the bevel gear. So let's see if we have anything to take off. Looks like we do. We're going to come down here and try to remove one of these guys if we can. an exacto knife somewhere I was gonna try and slip underneath the uh, shim to kind of pry it off but it looks like that and my box cutter are both missing so oh here we go uh, found it so oh not the camera so we're gonna take this I'm gonna go underneath and we're going to pry this this guy up perfect so this is a th this is a pretty thin shim too so we're gonna keep this to the side Put this back on. We're going to try him out in this configuration. But for now, what we're going to do is take a shim off the bottom of the spur gear and put it on the top because our setup was forcing the sector to be way higher than it should have been. So we're going to respect that and move some things around. However, it looks like this didn't have many shims on it at all. But it's got a thick bushing, so we're going to try that. There we go, that guy moves freely. Um, let's take this. If I can get it up. <laughs> All right, I'll take this, put it on the top of the spur. And see if that helps the sector get some free movement. And just for, for a test purpose, we're gonna take all the shims off the sector just to see if the spur is what's pushing it up or if the gear itself is just being pushed up by the shims we have too hard. Actually, we're not going to do that because that is way too low. Yeah, they won't even move now, so we're going to put these back on. All 
Alright, there we go. So that's that's all set. I'll put that back out upside down. No, it's not. Let's put that back on. Let's put this back in. Now if we're lucky, we should be all set, however. I really want to try this out again. One, two, Tighten these all down. All right, and the gears are spinning freely. That's that's what we want. This is good. They are still a little stiff. Um, however, now we get to look at. Oh, the sector is very loose, so we're gonna add some more shims in the sector. However, it looks like the spur and the bevel are in good spots so we're going to keep those guys where they are um, I'm going to check the play on the bevel through this that's been your favorite. alright so I like where these gears are I'm going to put another shim on the top of the sector gear then we will be all done um, yeah, and then after that, I think we can probably put the uh, the rest of the contents back inside the box. And at that point, we will be all set to go. Now, as you've probably noticed through this video series, this is not the fanciest DSG you can have. Um, when I open it back up, I'll just, I think I pointed out the parts before, but nothing in here is necessarily high quality or high end except for the... Uh, I guess really the DSG itself, the Lonex nozzle. Let's look at it. We got JG gearbox shell, stock trigger setup, SHS gears, um, a ZCI spring guide, an old core spring, the JG stock tappet, a Lonex air nozzle, an SHS piston, and the stock piston head. So I mean. And then we got the, the new FLT bushings. But before that, they were normal bushings that were shaved down, or they were just like modified tempered but shaved down. It didn't matter. We still got the stock ARL as well. So everything in here is not necessarily super expensive or super overboard. Like my guns that I have right here, where I have the stupid retro arm split gearbox and the gate Titan and all the fancy crap on the, the DSG over here. You don't need all that stuff, really, to build an affordable or working DSG. Um, it's not, yes, it looks cool, yes, it's cool to use, but at the end of the day, if it's if it's costing you $1,000 to build that gun, and it's costing you $400 to build this gun, you got you to gotta weigh what you want. It's the price of performance. Um, yeah, and I have another DSG somewhere that's the same price as that one, it's tucked away in parts because it's not even put together right now um, but I just go to show you, you don't need all the high-end fancy parts on the market to get something to work so with that being said we're going in here we're gonna start throwing this stuff back together um, I'm gonna take this out oh what did we say we wanted to put another shim on here right so let me, let me grab this one there we go okay so I do want to do a fit check with the sector gear. I, I I don't like to just put stuff together and say, oh, I need one more shim. I'll put a shim on it and work. I want to make sure I did need one more shim and I wasn't just telling myself that. So we're going to make sure it fits together well, one last time, hopefully. Um, then we will be A-OK, -okay, good to go. And then, uh, yeah, so we'll probably take the sector out. Actually, we'll take all, we'll take all the gears out. Except for this, probably we'll leave the, the spur in put the ARL in, put the bevel on top of that then we'll move up and put the cylinder assembly in no, the, the sector and the cylinder assembly then the piston and then we will top it all off 
with oh and to have a plate will be with the cylinder assembly and then we'll put the spring and spring guide in as you close the box together and pray that nothing flies everywhere so we got this I'm just testing the sector here it's no longer moving gear is still spinning freely that's what we want to see alright so this is good we're all set now I might actually re-grease the gears too before I put it all back together for good um, it's always good to put some new stuff in there really just it can't hurt as long as you're not throwing a ton of grease in there it really can't hurt give it a nice clean put some nice new grease in there get all the dirt and the grime and the metal shavings out of there which realistically you should be doing as a routine thing anyway however no one no one really does um, so just putting that out there for you guys all right all set so let's take these out put the grease on them and then we will uh, get going so this tube is almost empty but I have another one in the back of my desk put that there so I'll put some on the piston tracks too that's where our problem was in the first place So whenever I grease a gearbox, I always grease the bushings or bearings. I like to get grease around the, the gear axle. That's where most of the friction is in the gearbox. It's the gear axle against the bushing. Um, then, oop. then I like to get actually I think the spur gear and I grease two parts on the spur gear because the spur gear contacts both of the other gears. So if you get grease on the two gear levels of the two steps on the spur gear, that's why some people call it step gear, um, it will get grease on the other two gears as well. So that's what I'm going to do now. Then I should be good to just throw it back together. So she's all set. It's gonna get some uh oops. Get some grease on her. Alright, so she's all set now. Uh, I actually want to make sure she's in all the way, so we're just gonna press down on that. So that bushing just in this setup sticks out quite a bit. It's a different bushing. So I like to make sure that it's not in the wrong way. Alright, she looks good. So we're going to leave that. Throw the spur on first. Make sure it spins freely. Then the AR latch. This is the bane of my existence in most gearboxes. This guy can be the most annoying thing you've ever dealt with in your life. He does not cooperate. Uh, oh, is that spring messed up? That spring is completely messed up. Hold on. So you can't see. Here's the, uh, the spring. If you're unfamiliar with these springs, there should not be a bend in it right there. Uh, this bend up top is the one that hooks over the gear. There should not be that second bend in there. Right around here where it comes up and then back and over. It should just come back and over. It shouldn't go up. So I'm actually going to do, see if I have another one somewhere. Um, I might cut the video here for a second just to uh, figure out where my stuff is. Actually, you know, it's been back into place. This should work fine. So I'm going to take this, put it back on. 
So see now that it's it's bent back into place, it's just straight, it's going over the top of the AR latch, it's not kind of curling around it and going behind it. I'm going to slide that into place, make sure it fits, I'm going to put the bevel gear, hold, it, hold the AR back, put the bevel gear on top, and make sure that everything locks itself into place, just like so. Now these like to pop out, you just kind of have to live with it and monitor it as you're building the rest of the gun. Try to not pull the gearbox, you get caught on anything. Nine times out of ten when you have to, when you fail putting the, the shell back together, it's the AR latch or the trigger that pops out. Uh, it's generally annoying, annoying stuff to deal with. Okay, so I'm just like prepping a little bit here for that. Um, what I'm going to do next is take this throw this guy on make sure he's all lined up actually you know what there you go put him away um Keep hitting the camera. We're gonna take this guy, put him here. I'm probably gonna actually put some grease on this uh, air nozzle before. I, yeah, I put that together. And for this one, I like to use it's the Still Super Lube, but it has um, extra silicon in it, which is better for kind of the uh, air seal type components. So this is going to be for the piston head and the air nozzle. So we got that all greased up. That's all greased up. This is all set. We're going to put the piston in, the cylinder assembly, line up the um, tap and plate with the spring, throw it all in here, and then we're going to try and put this last pit together without it all exploding. So this is where stuff gets fun. Um, hopefully I don't have to do this like 10 times so I'm just going to clean up my area a little bit to give me more room to just put this together because I don't have a lot of time today and I don't want to sit here and have to go find a bunch of pieces that flew because oh crap I still have to put the rest of this thing together I'm just dropping everything Okay, so I need that and that, and I need this. Oh, hold on. There we go. Alright, so these are all installed. Now what I like to do is flip the gearbox upside down. Try not to let anything pop out. Once you do that, I get the, that's because I'm a righty, so if you're a lefty, you don't have to do this step, but I put the spring in the back, the spring guide, I hold the gearbox components down with my hand, and I kind of use a pair of pliers 
to guide the spring guide into place while my hand holds down the actual gearbox components. Once that pops in, I transition to the front. If you can see, my AR latch already fell out. So that's, I gotta redo this already. So if you have to redo it, do the opposite. You guide this out with your pliers, detention it, put it down. Everything should be fine. So that's what I said. AR latch is extremely annoying and nine times out of ten will pop out. This design is terrible to be quite frank for tinkering and putting the parts back in. There should be some sort of screw that locks it in place or the design should be changed or the buffer around is raised or my own thing that I designed which is that there's actually an extension on the AR latch that comes around the housing it sits in and locks it in place so it can't pop out. A um, little disappointed people haven't done that yet but the other thing is that I think Lori Mikey actually sells a little clip on Shapeways that lets you lock it in place while you work, which I probably should buy because it just fell out right there. Yeah. I hate this part if you haven't noticed. It's not something that just gets better as you get better at teching. It's just the parts just designed terribly. Um, that, that's why we people like Lori have made things. Like an, an actual thing you can go buy just to lock it in place while you work. Because it's, it, it's really terribly designed for sitting in place. It's not meant to be taken apart and worked on all the time. Someone texted me. Um, Alright, so take two. The other thing is that the sector gear likes to pop out too sometimes. The tappet plate, the pressure on it. So you can see a hole in the tappet plate. It's kind of like go. The sector gear tilts. It's the spring up here forcing the tappet down that knocks the sector off. So that's something else you got to watch for is to make sure the sector doesn't actually pop out of its spot. or that the shims don't pop off. That likes to happen too. All right, so we're gonna try this again. Nah, AR latch, stop it. Stop it. Piece of shit. Right, so if I can get this to lower down. I can see the AR latch popping out, which is freaking me out a bit and making me really hesitant to do anything. Did it pop out? Oh, it almost did. Hold on. Now you gotta make sure all the moving parts still still function properly and are seated properly. So you pull your trigger, you push your air nozzle in. These should you can should be able to see the post in place and they should be able to function properly without getting stuck. That's likes to happen a lot too when you close these gearbox, especially ones with like the M170 springs like this one. Um, you have to clamp things down and unfortunately 
they unseat themselves right before you clamp everything down and you don't want to screw everything in and find out later that something was actually not seated properly and everything gets jammed up My fingers have too much grease on them to screw these things in. Alright, so now I've got some of the screws in. Again, you want to make sure everything's still, nothing's jammed in place. It moves freely. Make sure all the holes line up. There you go, and you got yourself a properly put together gearbox. So now, flip back over if you want. You've just got to fill in the last couple screws that you haven't put in yet. So for me, it's the ones on top. Last screw, then we should be all set with this whole process. All right, guys, and this screw it's been stripped for a while, so don't worry about that one. That's it. That finishes um, part two of this series. Um, the gearbox is now fixed. The gun will be functioning. Everything. The, the, Two problems were solved, it's back together, and um, next we are going to install it back into the body of the gun, and um, then we should have a functioning working gun by the end. So thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next time.